Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dialar's Twi'lek Tactics. Cariolis has come to the game today. What is today? Today is October 26th. Uh, the collaboration event is over, and we've finally got our long-anticipated, long-awaited new energy hero. And is he good? Well, how about we save that to final thoughts? Uh, but in this video, we're going to go do the deep dive. So without further ado, let's go over to pre-recorded footage on my main account where I took him right up. Didn't max him, but I got him damn close. So let's go to that, and then we're going to look at some gameplay footage. And then we're going to come back here for my final thoughts on Cariolis. Let's go. Cariolis, 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 Carrot, Carrot, I don't know. You pronounce it how you see fit. It's a little bit of a, of a complicated name, in my opinion. Care. It's kind of Carolus. Carolus. Cariolus. I don't know. Say it whatever you want. Uh, very, very cool. The the Atlas heroes, I, I tend to like their style. I like their aesthetic. Uh, not the movie cinematic we're used to, but it's okay. It, it'll do the trick. So mine is uh, Hyper Evolved. What did we just did at 105? He is X30. So I know there's people, uh, they're going to be complaining, hey, this, this isn't relevant to newer players with smaller units. You know what? This guy's worth it. He is worth to take to Hyper Evolved. He is worth to take to X30. So I'm going to show you what he's capable of. So as we do on the deep dives, we are going to dive into his kit first, and then we're going to discuss gear, and then we're going to go on to gameplay. So... Cariolis, he is an Atlas SSS Energy with a little bit of a an angel effect. You got that halo up top there. Uh, very, very cool. Very, very cool aesthetic, as I already said. Now, first, let's look at what the game strategy is, uh, what the game recommends. So look at up top in the right-hand corner, you see that recommended positioning. Um, so it's not, it doesn't do it automatically in the game, I don't think, but it does um, tell you that it, it, it's kind of preferred since he's like, ultra long range unit they want them at the back they're recommending crit rate crit damage and attack those are all important stats for them i don't know if those are the gear sets you want uh gear set surge sun signet overload makes sense that's that's kind of what i'm going to get into too commanders prototypes don't care obviously you want the new one i did not buy the new one so you're not, you guys aren't going to see that from me but uh crit rate crit damage attack surge attack and and sun signet uh, is uh, pretty much what I already theorized. So let's dive into his kit first. His ultimate, he is an energy character, so uh, Cariolis pushes the enemy, punishes the enemy with heavenly fire, aka lightning, causing damage equal to 650% of Carrie's attack to all targets in the selected area. This will create a shockwave that spreads across the entire battlefield, entire battlefield, causing damage to all targets equal to 1,200% of uh, Cariolis' attack. So just right here, uh, it tells you that attack is very, very going to be prominent in his kit. Talent effects. Heavenly Fire deals true damage to enemies. Very, very good. If you guys don't remember what true damage does, it bypasses defense, bypasses defense reduction, bypasses crit damage reduction. It goes straight to that old health pool, goes right to it. Uh, exclusive effect, uh, the ultimate enhancement. Enemies hit by Heavenly Fire enter a shock state. What is shock state? It's impossible for them to activate their common skills so they can do their basic and their ultimate. Not their common skills. Area damage received is then increased. And I'm assuming that means AOE damage. You know, he's an energy hero. Um, the energy heroes are going to be doing lots of AOE damage. So when it says area damage, that means area or AOE damage is re received is increased by 30% for five seconds. This is his, his X30. And it's very, very powerful. I, I'm rating him as a must X30 since he is uh, pretty much a linchpin on the energy team. And I like X30s that also go... Uh, above and beyond the 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 unit's own kit. So this goes out. This actually buffs your other AOE damagers or heroes damage. So very very cool. Not only does it help him, it helps your whole team. Even though it's for five seconds, but it's five seconds after he does his ultimate. Uh, and then this shock state impossible to activate common skills. That's very very cool. And my Discord's going nuts. 
Next, this is a common skill. This is what he would prevent on his ultimate if you have him X30. So Cariolus judges enemies in a straight line, dealing damage equal to 320% of Carry's attack. Okay, cool, very, very basic. Is that a AoE? I think that this kind of does get classified as an AoE. Think like Ares just doing a straight line attack. He's gonna hit everybody in that area, right? And it says judges enemies, not enemy. Uh, talent modifier, heavenly executions damage becomes true damage. So another one, big old true damage. And it doesn't say anywhere in this, in his kit that he cannot crit. So this is, I don't know if it's, if the true damage itself can crit, because I do believe we have another hero. I can't remember who off the top of my head. Tell me down in the comments where it says that true damage can crit. Otherwise, true damage usually doesn't crit. Uh, the exclusive effect, if this skill deals critical damage, so obviously it becomes true damage and it obviously can crit. So there's, that answers my own question. If it crits, it slightly pushes back the targets, targets, enemies, and stuns them for two seconds. And what I like is this stun is not based on accuracy. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I like this. This is That's perfect. Uh, slight pushback. His second common skill, Lightning Veil. So he's got a passive and an active effect. I like this. They're doing these in kits. Uh, I can't remember the, again, I do believe it's... It's one of the collab units had this, but tell me down in the comments. The passive part of it is for each hero with Thunder Barrier on both sides of the battlefield, and the people that have Thunder Barriers is, uh, I do believe, I know this guy does. I know Nord does. Um, the wording is a little bit different on Ares kit, but Ares, Ares has a barrier that's procced by, or it has to do with charges. I'm not sure if Ares counts, but it might, it might not. So for each of those heroes, right, you know, carry, Nord, maybe Ares. Um, Cariolus increases damage dealt by 5%, can stack up to five times. Okay, so that tells me that Ares must count, because if there was, say, a Nord carry on one side, and then a Nord carry on the other side, that's only four times. You're only going to stack up to four times. So obviously, Ares must count, but you can only count one of them. So I think Ares does count. The active portion, uh, Cariolus releases a bolt of lightning hitting up to three targets, so another AoE, dealing damage equal to 600% of Carrie's attack and simultaneously creates a Thunder Barrier on himself. What does Thunder Barrier do? All incoming damage is reduced by 60% for three seconds. So just think of this like a big old damage reduction uh, buff. This is like Guardian State for tanks. They give themselves 60% extra damage reduction as well. Um, it's, it's just a survivability mechanic, and uh, the energy characters need it because they tend to be kind of squishy. Talent Modifier. While Thunder Barrier is active... Damage dealt to nearby targets, <coughs> pardon me, I got a cold. Damage is dealt to nearby targets every half a second equal to 80% of his attack. And the Thunder Barrier lasts for three seconds, so it's going to hit for six times. The exclusive modifier, discharge damage increased by 20% and hits up to five targets. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that his active part, he releases a bolt of lightning hitting up to five targets now, doing up to 600% of his attack. So just a bigger AOE. Now he can hit everybody on the battlefield. And then his passive storm field at the start of battle, Cariolus protects the middle and back row characters or heroes by creating an abyssal storm field for nine seconds. The heroes within the Abyssal Radius take 24 or actually 28% less damage. So it's just a damage reduction buff. Any charges into the Abyssal Storm will be interrupted. Think uh, Taylor, think Teresh Throw, think any Vanguard, think Mooka. Anything that has a charge effect will just be nullified and just stopped dead in its tracks because the energy team used to be quite susceptible to the tank team chucking a tank into the back with Teresh. Talent modifier reads, allied heroes restore 10 energy every second in the radius. Keep in mind, you're only gonna get, it's only gonna last for nine seconds. So really, you're only gonna gain 90 energy, which isn't even one sixth of an ultimate bar. 
keep that in mind. Whoa, lost it. The exclusive effect. When the abyss ends, it will explode, dealing damage equal to 400% of carry's attack to all enemies. Unsure whether or not that also multiplies off of the surge set. If that counts as his attack, I would assume it does. While simultaneously pushing all enemies away from it by 7 meters. So it's got a big old, you know, it's going to protect them. And then as soon as that 9 seconds is over, it's going to explode, push them back 7 meters. So they got a little bit of room, a little bit of breathing room to do what they got to do. So that's his kit. Very, very cool. All of his abilities are based on attack. Nothing is based on accuracy, which I like. And he's got a lot of stuff that helps other people do increased AOE damage. If we want to look at his talent modifiers, do them all. Uh, let's look at these sub ones. Uh, so when he casts an auto skill, which is a basic, to attack the same target three times, damage the next, uh, the damage of the next basic is increased by 15%, not a big deal. When uh, an ability critically strikes, it will immediately reduce the remaining cooldown of this spell or of that ability by 15%. It can only happen every once every 10 seconds. Kind of weird uh, language things there, but we're used to that. We can kind of parse through it at this point. After the ultimate is cast, the damage caused by the next common skill is increased by 15%. After the basic attack, after the basic attack attacks the same target three times in a row, I thought that was what the first one did. Damage uh, caused by the basic, the damage caused by this spell to caused by the spell to this target is increased by 12%. Okay, kind of weird wording, but kind of nice. You know, he's got um, no accuracy or anything. It's just attack, health, defense, and then crit rate, which he wants. So that's good. Cool. They finally decided to start optimizing all the stats, but do them all since he's a really, he's worth it. Uh, equipment. Let's get into how the gear this guy. Well, since you don't need to worry about accuracy, really, all you have to do is you kind of... He's a, he's, he's a lot easier to build, whereas Jaina needed a crit rate and accuracy and crit damage. This guy wants, first of all, you want him to crit because it does look like his, his true damage can crit. So really, really important to get his crit up as high as possible. Note that you're going to get 9% from his talents. So I have mine at about 80%, which puts him at about 90% crit rate, which is right on, I'd say that is the money mark. Shoot for about 80% crit rate from gear and then go for after that go for as high of attack and crit damage as possible since he's got so much aoe in his kit you want to run a surge set on him which is what the game actually recommends so uh you want to run crit rate gloves you see i already got it tempered which is really really nice i even got crit rate as a substat i love this piece this piece is awesome so crit rate gloves you want an attack helm with crit rate, crit damage, and attack substats. And then you want attack boots with crit rate, crit damage, and attack substats. Did I say crit? Uh, you want attack boots. I think I said attack boots. And then up top, you know the game. Just uh, do that two-set sun signet up top if you can, preferably. Because we want to temper the surge pieces. Because you want to temper the four surge pieces first. And you definitely want to temper the hands and head first since they give you that increased attack. Uh, which he really, really wants. Up top, you're just going to fill in the rest, and you're going to look for crit rate substats and then attack and crit damage. You see, I got a nice crit rate two there, a nice crit rate, crit damage, and attack there, and a nice, uh, no crit rate there, but I got crit damage times two and attack. So that's how you want to gear this guy. That's how you want to build this guy. That's his kit. Uh, now let's go check out some game footage. All right, let's pull up the other video segment. Ready? Okay. Hang on to your butts. Here we go. Okay, so at the time of this recording, uh, his specific endless battle is up. This is an energy battle. You see he is the focus character. He gives the most bonus points. Obviously, you want to use him here uh, to get as high a score as possible. Uh, Twilight Lands, unfortunately, Twilight Lands is closed. It is in the settlement stage, but he would be absolutely worth it in any energy bond in Twilight. He's going to make Twilight Lands even easier. Um, ancient ba or uh, ancient Altar, yeah, you're going to use him on the first boss. He's going to make that a little bit easier, but you're clearing it anyway. Uh, arena, we'll get to Arena. We're going to get to Arena later. Uh, soul mine you can use him in the atlas faction mine you're not going to use him in crimson abyss 
Um, Katosian Triangle, I don't have the Crimson Rot open yet. It is open tomorrow, which is Friday for me. He's obviously going to help out there immensely, and I hate Crimson Rot because it takes forever. I think it's going to make Crimson Rot a lot easier on auto. I think he is going to be absolutely money in that, and Mirage Space, because the first battle for Mirage Space requires you to use energy characters. As such, I think he's going to help out because that first battle in Mirage Space is often harder than the final battle. So in Katosian Triangle, you're going to use him in Crimson Rot, and you're going to use him in Mirage Space for with an energy team. Unfortunately, can't show you that right now. Lost Valley. Okay, this is the first place I can actually show you what this guy is made out of. So, Sincero Marsh, yes, it is very, you can clear it much, much faster with Hunters, but it is built for energy heroes. And now this is the team that I am running. Obviously, Miranda puts up the shield. She helps convert uh, the unit's damage to true damage if they're doing it under the shield. I don't know why all these heroes have the wrong sets on. But you see, there is my guy. He's in the back. Uh, you can see my commander and my prototypes. Let's just hit challenge. Let's just do it one time. And let's see the damage meter, how much this guy can put out. And... Boom, immediately off to a huge, huge head start. You know, Nord's coming up there too. Not a whole lot of units for Jaina to hit. And this fight is also going to a, uh, you, the units that can do true damage are gonna score higher. So his damage, this is not gonna be at scale to what he does anywhere else in the game. Keep in mind, the units like Luke Nord and Carry do true damage attacks in their kit, and as such, that's why they're scoring so high. But you see, out of all of the three energy true damage dealers, it is Carry that is far and above being able to pump out a lot more, given that his true damage can crit. And boom. So there's one place you can use them, but also, like I said, keep in mind that that type of damage is not going to carry over to other points in game. So you're gonna use him in Endless, uh, you're gonna use him in Ancient Altar, you're gonna use him in two dungeons in the Katoshian Triangle. How does this guy stack up in Arena? Okay, well, we're not gonna to go to the Arena because that's an inefficient way to test. We are gonna to go to my friends list because I got nothing but killers on my friends list. So let's start out with, if we can find them, Bad Juju. Bad Juju, he probably has one of the meanest, leanest, baddest summoner teams on my friends list that I've seen. Now, how you wanna run your energy team in Arena. This, I feel, is going to be the ideal comp. You see that Carrie and Jaina are in the back. We are using Purin. Purin generates energy and buffs up attack. Yes, if you want to get the most out of your energy team now, you kind of got to run the two supports. You want Miranda for the injections and the true damage under the dome for energy units, and you want Purin for everything that Purin brings to the table. This, I would say, is probably the best energy team. Now, of course, in a 3v3 setting, you're not going to run this because you're probably going to want Purin on something else. But I use Vanguards with Purin and Miranda. So I guess Vanguards and Energy are kind of like a flex team, right? You got You can only really use one on defense or offense. Otherwise, you're probably going to run uh, Summoners, Assassins, and Tanks um, on, uh, on defense. So Energy and Vanguards are kind of like your flex unit. And both of them kill Summoners. So... The, I've tried it without Purin, and one thing that you have to note that you're gonna get the most out of your, your energy PVP team, you do want Nord in a resonant set and Jaina in a resonant set. Otherwise, Nord just gets bum rushed and he dies. You're gonna see in this case, he is gonna get off his ultimate, even through the pounding. So let's show you against a top summoner team. So you see he's stunned, but there he goes with that resonant set and Purin. He gets his ultimate going, and then he goes. Now, he is going to die because it is summoners, so he is going to revive from Miranda. Boom. See, the team, their team is pretty much dead already. And look at the damage meter. It's Nord above everybody. But Carrie is doing better. Carrie, well, I think Carrie might have done better damage 
than Jaina. Let's look. 3835, he indeed did. My Jaina is uh, Immortal 2, Hyper Evolved 120, and Carrie did more damage. Now, keep in mind also, though, uh, we can go back in it. We'll do it one more time. Why? I don't know why. Keep in mind also that Jaina is in a resonance set, which is drastically reducing her crit her crit rate. Uh, so she's doing less damage. Um, and she's not in her surge set. Whereas Carrie is in his full glory of a set. So let's do that one more time. And again, Purin also in the resonance set as well, guys. So three of my characters here on resonant because you got to get out quick. Otherwise, the summoner is just going to bum rush you. So you see Carrie just used his one common skill to the side to take out a Gobo uh, rock, which sucks. But now there, he just killed Gobo. And now, actually, everyone's going to survive. Everybody survived that time. We just bum rushed them and just nuked them down. So you guys are used to energy nuking down summoners as is, right? You're used to that. So, you know, not a big deal. But it seems like he just made it a whole lot faster. Let's see there. Yeah, his damage is kind of applicable with Jaina as well. They're kind of similar. So very, very cool. Yeah, energy kill summoners. Yeah, Dylar, we know, we know. We know that. Okay, so now let's start, start looking for some... Uh, that's a Caraxia team. We are not going to kill that because it will kill us. Uh, I do believe Pal also runs. I got a lot of Caraxias on my friends list. Yep. Yeah. Don't try it against Caraxia. Uh, not going to go well. So this is an odd tank team, which I'm not going to test against because you're never going to see something with a Jaina in Arena. Uh, let's go to Mully. No, that's Vanguards. Let's just, let's just, let's run it. Let's see how it does against Vanguards. For some reason, I don't think it's going to work well because Ares is so good. Like, even though the, the bubble is stopping Ares up front, once he gets rolling, unless we can kill him, which we did. Okay, cool. So we did kill him. We did kill Ares, but I don't know how good his Ares is. Sorry, Molly. Don't know how good your team is. Now, Fearless. Okay, here we go. Here's a test because he has a maxed out Ares. I wish I could show you guys how good his is, but Fearless probably has one of the best, like his gear set he's got on him. It's either between him and Mayhem for the best Ares, but I know he does have Ares at MO5. So let's see. I have a feeling it's not going to stop Ares because you just can't kill him. Once he's built right, once he's built correctly, you're not, you're not, you're not killing an Ares. Look at full Jaina again. No, no, look at that. Just prevented him completely from getting going. That was cool. That was very, very cool. Fearless, you see that? You see that, bud? I know you're watching this. Shout out to him. So we just saw it beat a maxed out Ares. It just stopped him. It was that abyssal shield stopping his charge, stopping Ares from getting going. Ares just floated around like he was like stunned and dazed and confused. Uh, Mojo, what is Mojo running? Summoners, we're not gonna show that. We've already saw against the best summoners. Uh, let's find, I think Genghis. I think Genghis has, yeah, here we go. Here's an awesome tank team. Keep in mind it's Miranda, not Rez. Now. The Abyssal Field will stop the Panda throw. So here we go. And you'll see that the energy, once it stops Panda, it's just going to nuke. The, the tanks are just going to get nuked. At least I hope. My, okay, so Panda got off. Boom, boom. Yeah, but Panda's dead. Zeta's all but dead. Tresh is dead. Now it's just us and Wami. Oh, no. No, Zeta's still alive. Well, he's got a good Wami. Uh, Genghis Kong is a Genghis Khan is a beast. Let's see. Okay, there we stunned him. Oh uh, no, there he just killed my panda. Zeta's dead. Can you kill? Okay, if Nord can't kill a one-on-one -on -one Wami. Oh no, that's it. Look, it did not go well. We died. We died. Okay. Let's try that again, though. I was beating him earlier because this the hope and the hope and dreams of this team was to kill the tank team. Panda, yeah. Panda's getting his alt off. Didn't kill Miranda though. Maybe that's the difference. Yeah, look at that. Just just nuked them down. I think the difference was Panda killed Miranda last time, whereas this time. They didn't. 
Night and day difference there. Uh, let's see. Who else has a really good tank team? Grimlock. Okay, Grimlock's got a, look at that, 7.3 million. And it is the res team, which is the, uh, the res team is the, probably the uh, predominant variation of the tank team in the game. Zeta up front in the tank, in the tank position with Panda and Tresh in the back. This is your ideal. This is what you're going to see for the most uh, for, uh, this is what you're going to see the most times in Arena. So let's see how this fares against the res variant of the tank team. So here's the throw. Didn't work. Panda. Oh, there's the throw. But Panda didn't do anything. You see, he just stopped at the beginning of the field. Are you going to kill my Purin, Panda? Nope. And they're dead. Again, nuked into oblivion. That is a thing of beauty. That was not possible before today. And I think that's... Let's see if I can find a team. I want to find an assassin. I don't think I'm going to find an assassin team without Caraxia. That's a, that's, a, that's a weaker variant of a tank team. Hunters. Let's see how energy does against hunters. I, I have a feeling it's going to go very, very well because we're just going to nuke them into oblivion. But let's just show you guys for posterity's sake. Nord got pushed back a little bit. Now the hunters are rolling. We got to get through those shields first, right? And as soon as they kill Nord, then they're going to, or kill, or kill Pyrrhon, they're going to buff up that shield. But no, no, done. Done. Now that wasn't an ideal hunter team, but it still worked nonetheless. Okay, hunt. You know, summoners, yes, check. Vanguards, check. Uh, summoners, check. Vanguards, check. Hunters, check. Tanks, check. Okay, cool. Korra assassins, no. Not going to kill a Korra assassin team with Moto. It's not going to happen. In fact, let's just show you how badly that's going to go. So this, no Moto on this team. So keep that in mind. That is the ideal assassin team. It would be Moto in for Rick. But let's show you what happens on the second best variation of the uh, assassin team. You're going to see they just, they're all, or their immunities are just always up at the wrong times. And we just can't get a foothold into them. Plus with assassin's cloak, they got damage mitigation. We just, we can't do anything, and they're just going to kill you. They're, you're just not going to have a chance. They're going to, they can teleport, which is not a charge. They can teleport into your backline and just kill Jaina, kill Carrie, and your team just falls apart. So assassins, not really a good counter to it. Now, very, very impressive showing, right, for that team? But I want to show you guys something. Now, I'm going to, Lycan is uh, another officer in Rev 1. This, that's the alliance that I am in. Uh, Lycan does have... This is a tank team with Purin and Tachikoma. Now, I confirmed with him that his Tachikoma is X30 Hyper Evolve 65. What this does is Tachi is going to stun the person with the highest attack. And I do believe in this gear setup, that is going to be carry and Nord, but Carrie, I think is gonna have the highest attack and Carrie is gonna get stunned. You can tweak that though, but the shields, before we were able just to basically melt and nuke down the tanks, what Tachikoma does is he's gonna disrupt me and he's gonna shield his whole team and when he dies, he's also gonna give the entire tanks a uh, guardian state for 15 seconds. And you're gonna see that uh, even though it's a 5.7 versus a 7.2, so a huge punch up if I can do it, it's not going to go well. Tachi, actually, when Tachi's X30 Hyper Evolved, uh, she actually makes the team quite defensible. You see Guardian State is up instantly. Nord is dead instantly. We haven't even budged. Like there, we're, 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 we're getting them. We're close, but they just push in. And yeah, and then it's, no, yeah, they just push in and, and, and overwhelm us. You know, Tachi just gives them more survivability, uh, more damage reduction, more, I can't remember what his kit is, but he just, he, he gives that huge shield, which that shield that he gives all the other tanks seems to line up. Let's go, let's do that again. It seems to line up with when all of my heroes are doing their ultimates. So let's see. I'm going to watch for the shield. Where's the shield to come up? 
So the shield is up now. Right when Nord is doing his ultimate, which is going to do nothing. Carrie's doing his ultimate. Didn't do a whole lot. Everyone's got Guardian State. And they're just they're just inching forward. It's like a bulwark, just a phalanx, just marching in and they just come in and kill me. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's a little extra tip for you. Tachikoma um, is actually really good. <laughs> really good on the tank team. But I think you got to X30 her. You really need her to get a whole bunch of survivability because you saw I did almost nuke her down. I did almost nuke her down right away. So uh, I after having tested this, I'm actually going to try to take my Tachi to X30 Hyper Evolved 120. So thanks, Lycan. Everybody say thank you, Lycan. Thank you, Lycan. So ladies and gentlemen, that is all the gameplay. Uh, you saw where in PvE he's used. You saw in PvP where he can be used. Now, another caveat, you can mix and match him on other teams. You can put him on a hunter team. In fact, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. All right. Let's pick on Exodus. No, he's got a weird tank team. Uh, who's got a normal tank team? Okay. Well, let's, I think it was... Grimlock. There we go. You can mix and match him with hunters. So here we go. So look at this. So now you can use hunters with him because hunters also succumb to the, the tank throw. Now, is this going to work? I don't know. Let's find out. I got, I like Leo in there. There are better people, but I was thinking in a, in a three versus three setting, I can do without a Leo on my Vanguard team and still use my Vanguards with Ares to kill a summoner team. But you see, we kind of got them pushed back. Panda's dead. Zeta's dead. Teresh is dead. Wami's dead. You know, we probably are gonna lose uh, Kerry since he's kind of up close there, but there we go. So you can mix and match this guy and other teams that are susceptible to um, tanks. And you can counter tanks. So if you don't have a lot of energy built up, if you don't have Nord, say you don't have Nord, which is unfortunate, I know. Hopefully he's coming back shortly or hopefully after when you're watching this, he has returned. But you can use him with other teams to still kill tanks. And that was Grimlock's 7.3 with a res, a level 70 Abek monster tank team. Okay. So there we go. That's about the game footage. Very, very cool. Um, we're going to go to final thoughts. I don't want to say too much right now because I want to save it for final thoughts. Okay. So what'd you think of them apples? That was pretty cool, huh? All right. Final thoughts on Cariolus. Uh, He's good. He's really good. His X30 is good. Uh, he does lots of damage. He brings a lot to the field other than just damage. He, like Jaina, he's a little bit squishy though, but he definitely, you know, he alone makes the energy team uh, an, an almost guaranteed tank killer, depending on the lineup. You saw that Tachi team really stopped it. Uh, but he's good. He's really, really good. He is what the energy team needed. Uh, he's like a lifter to the whole team. Because remember, his X30 also increases the AOE damage uh, of everyone on the team. And why don't I have any music? All right, my music. Oh, wait, I know why. Well, bear with me. There. Wow, Dylar. Yeah, his X30 increases the AOE damage of everyone on the team. And you really need that against the tank teams because you're kind of relying on the true damage from him, Nord, uh, and uh, even Miranda underneath the... Or not Miranda. Even Jaina underneath the Miranda Dome. You're really relying on all those pieces synergizing together to nuke that tank team down really, really quickly. So what would I give him on a grade? I would probably give him an A. Um, where A++ is the highest, I'm giving him an A. Uh, I love the fact that you can mix and match him on other teams. He's really good that way. He he lifts hunters. He makes hunters a more reliable tank killer. Um, yeah, he's just good. Like He is really good. Um, I'm going to have to put him, given his what he brings to the table i'm putting him above nord in my tier list now and actually i think i'm probably going to slide nord past jaina now that the energy teams is better um we can you know nord is used less and less and whereas jaina and 
and this guy I think are going to be used more. So yeah, this guy, really, really good. Go get him. He's good. You'll enjoy him. Work on him eventually. Um, the only downside is that uh, Nord is not available for free to play. So the energy team as a whole is not really available to them, which is a big glaring black eye on this game. Hopefully, given the fact that this guy has lightning shield synergies based is baked into his kit you know the only other people that are giving lightning shield is what Ares and nord well nord and maybe Ares. kind of tells us that yes they we're probably going to get nord on the giant tower next week so ladies and gentlemen uh the word of the day is lycanthrope because uh he showed us that little tit well i should say me testing against him showed us that little tidbit about tanks put lycanthrope down in the comment section of this video uh, it'll let me know you made it to the end I will thank you profusely and also tell me what you think of Cariola till next time ladies and gentlemen cheers peace bye bye